Hi, this is Benendorf, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Victoria 2, Heart of Darkness. We last left off, we were in the midst of adding airplanes to our armies, as well as preparing for another war against China. So, uh, let's get started. First things first, some of these airplanes have finished, so I'm going to send them on to join some of these armies. Another one here. Let's see. And one here. Which will have these both meet up in Southeast Asia. And other than that, um, let's see how Sinai is doing over here. I think I'll expand over here next. But let's unpause. I wonder who the first one will be to go bankrupt. And it's Liberia. It's unfortunate for them. And management strategy just finished, so... Let's see what other options we have. In 1919, so one more year before we can finish uh, researching a few more of these. I'm going to go with social alienation, which puts us right before 1919. And we'll increase our education efficiency a little bit, plus have some effect on colonial migration, which will be useful to eventually perhaps bring send well more Japanese people will move to some of these large states which will eventually allow us to convert them into actual states rather than provinces so in the long run very useful so let's keep going and making money hand over fist again which is okay with me oh yes and this crisis is heating up. My, France is not going to end up on the good side of this. Colonial education policy. Hmm. I can either gain a little bit of prestige and a tiny amount of research points, four days worth, or that's not worth it for the militancy. I'll take the consciousness and a slight increase in literacy. Every little bit help, helps when it comes to literacy. And let's see... We have some more armies here, so we're going to split them up and send them on over to join up with another of these couple armies. We now have air support on, oh no, that's the wrong thing, it's a navy. We now have air support for almost all of our armies, which will increase the speed of sieging down enemy provinces by a huge amount. And our newly, oh, there we go our newly formed stack that is coming together here in the home islands is doing is coming together quite well I'm gonna split off one airplane to send to our uh, our army here I'm going to turn off their hunting rebels and actually move them out of our capital that way if fascists try and take over I might just let them we will see but I want that as an option and airplane support and attack just increased uh, the way that backline troops work in Heart of Darkness is that their attack isn't really that high, but their support is. So, for instance, artillery, their attack's only three, so from the front lines, they're not very useful, but because, well, attack and defense, but because their support is so high, they have an attack of uh, 12 and a half from, is that right? No, 13 and a half from the backlines, so... Yeah, extremely useful in that case. And Tonga is now a core for what little of that is worth. Let's see, where's this more naval bases to upgrade? There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and decrease taxes on everybody again. We have enough naval bases building, and that's still plenty of income. And f France has... Uh, given in to the demands of this crisis, which puts us back securely in first place in prestige. Ah, and we can now do another reform. It's looking like wealth may be the way to go here. That's certainly the one with the highest amount of support. And to avoid increasing militancy unduly, I guess wealth it is. The poor still can't vote, so it doesn't change it too much. And after all, we don't want the poor to vote. Tax efficiency just increased, which thusly increases our income quite a lot. 
and all of these are still upgrading these naval bases and I was meaning to go ahead and combine all these armies so let's see yeah just the new one still coming excellent we have plenty of military power left in fact I'm gonna drop defense spending down to 56 percent which will still give us a decent growth but we don't need this high of growth rate we're not going to build another well we might eventually but we certainly don't need to at this point build all these additional uh, additional units um, and a tractor in Manila which I hear makes great envelopes let's see still having some problems getting all the artillery we need and small arms it would appear so we're having that problem that we had oh no now it's working I spoke too soon so disregard that it's not important new store in another state which is excellent and we have now hit the 0.1 percent mark for capitalists in Shandong so switching on over to craftsmen plus expanding all of the factories I can on the doctrine of fascism you guys can read all this if you'd like but it's just a little short history of fascism and placing the sun against Portugal I will take that I'm not sure if there's anywhere really worth taking from Portugal maybe the Sunda Islands although they're allied with the UK so it's probably not worth the war and by probably I mean 100% definitely not worth the war but oh well it was a good thought and Prussia has called us into a war which apparently the uh, Prussia is trying to annex this now communist country so sure I'll join in there doesn't hurt me other than costing me a lot but I'm made of money so I can wait while Prussia very quickly overwhelms uh, Schl Schleswig yeah I think that would be it and we are back under the 15 infamy mark which for those of you paying attention means that China's about to get another friendly visit by the Japanese the question being of course who uh, well being of course which state should we take or should we maybe take some of this land from uh, Gangshi or even from King Hai, although they are a lot better allied. Um, so let's see. We could also take Formosa, which is Tibetan, or not Tibetan, um, Taiwanese. But that's only about 900,000 pops, which is an okay number. Henan, on the other hand, is significantly more than that. I'm thinking that will have to be the one to take. As much as all this tea would be worth, it's not worth as much as having that large of a population in added to our empire so China oh wait we are still at a truce with them aren't we how annoying I guess we'll have to wait then it's not the end of the world we'll certify that or we'll make for sh certain that we will be low enough infamy that we won't go over the limit and all the tea in Japan let's give it to the capitalists they certainly could use some more money they're just starving out there oh we assumed leadership against in this war that's kind of humorous and it looks like it will be over very short very soon late interwar bombers have already been invented despite the fact that it is 1918 and in our timeline the war isn't even over yet not f until the 11th of the 11th 11th day of the 11th month the guns fell silent and you know all that jazz oh, it's annoying to ha have to wait so long to declare war on China hmm conserve I can make the conservative militant or yeah I'm gonna take the prestige conservative can be a little more militant what to do 
Uh, we are too friendly with Gong Shi to take anything from them. But I could decrease relations and go ahead and take some land anyways because it would really be nice. Oof. Socialists. I don't want socialists. It's too much micromanagement. So yeah, I'm going to move some troops and get cracking on invading Gong Shi. Although this may sort of uh, end up hurting me if I get found immediately and take a bunch of infamy. But such are the risks of war. And of course moving this another army onto the boats. Send it over here to China because that's pretty much the biggest front and thus the place that we need the most troops. And before I get started with any war, oof, that is not a very good general. Oh, but I'm still at war, so... Ugh, annoying. You Prussians, finish off this war already. I can't even imagine where are they currently trying to occupy. Wow, there's a lot of France in Prussia right now. Prussians are... where is... Here. There's diplomatic map mode. Ah, right here. So they are slowly trying to take the rest of it. Rather, Mecklenburg is. A oh, letter campaign. Ooh, 15%. I'll take the 15% in liberal. Up to 15%. Actually, no. 10% more liberal in the population is worth more than that. In the long run. Yes, it is. That added about 4% to the voters that are now supporting liberal. And an election event, state capitalism is the economic system of choice for the fascists, so I will support that one. And we are losing money, so I'm going to raise taxes on the poor to let them pay for it. And hopefully this war will be over soon. Full, no, definitely not full citizenship. Immigrants in my Suzhou? I don't think so. Mass advertising, yes, some additional education efficiency and additional consciousness, which at this point in the game with the amount of political reforms we have is an okay thing because it means that people will vote for what they really believe in, and that's what we'd like. So, uh, social alienation is finished. I'm going to let the research pile up so that we will get an extra little, an extra little boost to the first the first technology we decide to invest in in 1919 and I'm not sure which of those will be the ones we will invest in artillery certainly looks awfully nice but so does great war experience and pretty much all of these oil driven ships uh, modern naval design it's all quite useful I'm thinking I will go with the land military research though and let's see, still quite a few unemployed in Shandong. Expanding the glass factory again, so it should take care of itself now. And let's do not want free trade, because fascists don't want free trade. And the fascists are always right. At least when we want them to be in charge. Ah, and here are the two new armies that we have added to our Africa Corps. Plus a tractor in another state. Surely almost all of our states have tractors now. But campaign for Married Women's Property Act. Um, all pops take, gain some consciousness and become a little more liberal. I'm okay with that. Let's get all the political reforms through and then become fascist. Because that makes sense. Another province is a core. And welcome to 1919. The war is over in our timeline anyways. Fascists have gained some more space. And it's time for another episode of... Let's change political rights. First, it looks like gerrymandering is the one that people want, so gerrymandering is what they'll get. Lucky them. Now, technology. Onward and upward. Hmm, modern army doctrine looks great. Has this modern divisional structure, which drops down combat width. I think that one will have probably the largest effect in the long run. Uh, it, it increases the recon of dragoons as well as their attack and defense bringing them up to a reasonable level although still not great uh, engineers and guard and infantry all gain some attack and some defense 
and it will lower supply consumption, which is interesting. It might kind of tank our, uh, or at least hurt our industries, but it will decrease what we have to spend. So that's what I will start with, and it will take me slightly more than a year to finish it. But that's okay, that's about what I was expecting. Oh right, and where where were my brains? Uh, first of all, protectionism. Second of all, I was supposed to justify a war here. But they are once again friendly with us. Why do they like us so much? Stop being our friends, we don't like you. Gah. Oh, another holy site disturbed. This one in Alaska. Eh, I'll take the consciousness and a little bit of militancy. Your militancy has finally dropped down pretty low. Which is good, because we will soon be at war again. Because we are jingos. Heck, at this point, it's probably just worthwhile to wait and... Wait for the truce to end with the Chinese Empire and deal with them instead of even worrying about Gangxi. So, that's what I will do. If by best to do so, I mean, this is my plan. Um, speaking of good ideas, going to pay off some of these loans. And we are still at war because they cannot, or the Prussians, or rather their minor allies, are really bad at taking bits of land. However, if they take some more back from France, they might become the North German Federation or even Germany at some time before the end of this game. I wouldn't bet on it, but it's possible. And I do not want anything but residency, so give them residency, although there are literally no voters in this particular place. So that meant nothing. Let's look. Uh, we are, we've slowed down our industrial growth. At least a little bit, or so it would appear to me. But it's okay, we're still head and shoulders above France and the UK, and then the US is the next highest and way down the list, followed by Prussia, and then the rest aren't even really in contention anymore. Uh, secularization is not what we're looking for. Man, Austria really got beat up lost Romania and then lost some land to France and to Prussia and now they're still large in size but not very meaningful and this whole study circle thing happening again so going to choose as I chose the last time Oof, where's all of our money going I'm going to cut subsidies and raise taxes on the middle and the rich because apparently we are running out of money again which, not something I like. Ah, state capitalism, very much in support of that. And another four months we'll be able to start against uh, the Chinese again. Uh, a little over four months. August 20th. And the liberal faction is now in charge. Which, I'll leave them in charge for a little bit. They seem to be increasing the speed of our industrial growth quite dramatically and I'm gonna have to raise taxes on the rich up to be equal with the rest I'll let the liberals stay in power for a little bit and then switch on over to something else wow Shandong is growing fast uh, I will switch on back over to conservatives so that I can have interventionalism and that all that super valuable ability to subsidize factories as well as actually close them because capitalists don't seem very keen on that uh, but we now have another core which yay for us I mean I guess it's pretty nice a hunger strike Oof. I guess I'll let the conservatives gain militancy that wasn't great either way though and it would appear that we have finished a naval base somewhere based on the fact that we now have a lot more uh, a lot more naval supply airplanes just gained some organization and a lot of defense which is good you know defense is always good and slim picketings definitely going with consciousness let them vote how they want our rebels are pretty well in hand and 
actually, other than the campaign for safe working conditions, so are all of these movements. Fortunately, we really just don't have the ability to pass any of those social reforms. I'd be happy to post pass either health care or school systems, but it's not going to happen. We just don't have the support. Study circle. Again, going to take the prestige. Conservative can get pissed off if they want. And look at that. More political reforms. We are just passing them like they're going out of style. So, weighted universal. The poor will now be allowed to vote. Good for them, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't support it, but whatever. And yes, black shirts. 10% more fascist. That suits me. More fascists. You never have enough of those, it would appear. And seeing as how we will soon have a pretty good size, or a pretty good increase to our naval supply. I really wish that I could increase taxes. I may have to actually go ahead and research some more of these plus tax efficiency tax at this rate. But anyways, because we are gaining naval supply, going to build another uh, stack of of um, of naval units. So 10 dreadnoughts and 20 cruisers. Two, There we go. And that will probably set us back quite a bit on cash, but it's not the end of the world. And the liberals will probably soon be out of power, because I'm kind of tired of seeing this bankrupt factory symbol. But Shandong keeps on expanding pretty well. Might just catch up at some point in the near future. Let's see, uh, Suzhou has enough capitalists, I'll switch over to Craftsman, and Zhejiang Ze 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 has enough as well, so just switch over to Craftsman for both of those, and let's speed up our industrialization even further. International crisis in West Macedonia, and it is Russia against France once more. But I am still considered at war and thus cannot get involved. Because these worthless Mecklenburg troops are just sitting here doing nothing. Ah, gold standard, additional tax efficiency. That is excellent. There we go. No longer money is no longer a problem. So much for needing more tax, we just needed more inventions. And speaking of which we should have we have quite a few inventions that should still be coming through here pretty soon some of these have been out here for a while like national radio networks still can't build radios yeah we're gonna need a lot more uh, naval supply but we will get it I am fully confident we have a lot of naval bases still in the process of being built and speaking of naval bases, I'm betting at least, yep, this one here in China needs to be rebuilt. And let's see, there we go. We have peace. And are going to immediately turn around and justify a war for another acquire state against China. Because peace, let's not give peace a chance. In fact, let's just, like, let's stop peace going to create another couple generals, but I think that a campaign against peace is a very good idea. It's not, but I can think it is. And they can either become liberal, or I can gain some prestige, and soldiers can become conservative. Um, I'll take the prestige. What the hell? Let's see where it still needs to be upgraded. Pyongyang, lucky you. Modern Divisional Doctrine, ah, because of, I assume, increase to clerks more than anything, we, or maybe um, one of the negative modifiers from a previous episode has dropped off, but regardless, we are now taking less than a year to finish off Modern Divisional Structure, and Speak of the Devil, it just finished. 
So, what to get next? Heavy armament would be very useful. So would great war experience, as would modern army doctrine. Hmm, I'll go with great war experience. The military tactics are a game changer. Although, with the decrease in width, the Chinese don't stand a chance against me at this point. But that's how I like it. I like my war is short, brutal, and one-sided. For us, of course. Let's see. Netherlands is joined in with Russia. Hell, I'll join in with Russia. I'm not a big fan of France, so anytime we can make them lose another crisis, all the better. And we'll let the poor have all this fish. I certainly don't want it. Another rearrangement in the house, but fascists are still lower than they were. And marketized small holder businesses, so decreased factory input efficiency tax. Or rather, increased. Either way, less inputs for the same amount of outputs is the outcome of that. And Russia has forced, the, forced uh, France to back down, which didn't seem to actually have much of an effect on France. But letter campaign. I'll gain the 10% uh, more liberal. Suits me. Looks like we have another choice here. Which one's to do? A uh, non-secret ballot seem to be the one to go with. So that's the one I will go with. And either reactionary or now nah, take the liberal in the upper house. So welcome to 1920. We now have about 16 years left. Uh, Midway Island just got some extra efficiency. Which reminds me that I should probably upgrade a few more of these. Oh, that base is upgrading. That one's upgrading. That one's upgrading. Never mind then, I imagine I can't actually. Ah, oh, there we go. Tonga. I can upgrade Tonga. And we are back below number one in military because the U.S. is mobilized. And the acquire state CB was found against China, but did not push us over the 25 cap, so don't care. I might just, before the end of this, do some crazy stuff if I have truly the strongest military. Maybe take bits of Australia, take bits of down here in Southeast Asia. You know, do whatever I want, basically. And apparently there's a problem with meetings being allowed. I'll just let them all take consciousness. They're, it's fine for them to meet. Looking at the newspaper, the jazz craze has become... A craze, I guess. And that's pretty much the only thing of note here in the newspapers. Thankfully, they stopped printing them as often because we were getting a little... I was getting a little tired of reading them all the time when there wasn't that much noteworthy. Um, let's see. I'm not sure if I have any more naval bases that I can upgrade. That one's finished. That one's... All of these are currently building. Yeah, that may be it. In which case, I'm going to go ahead and decrease taxes on everybody. Because we don't need this much money. 40, 40, and 30. Yeah, that'll suit me for now anyways. We're still making some money. And it seems to be increasing. So, here we go. 40, 30, and 30. It appears that decreasing taxes is increasing my income. Perhaps they're able to buy more. Or, I don't know. Maybe that's just unrelated. Regardless, have enough leadership, so you're going to create another admiral. Why not? And we have plenty of nice ships coming along soon, which the dreadnoughts are the ones that we really want because those will increase our military power pretty significantly. Should add another 275 or so. But look at that, interwar cavalry. Now all of these cavalry are worth using again. Or at least competitive. And let's see. Ugh, we still got six months left to justify that, or to spend justifying this war. It's a little annoying. And our CB uh, speed has just decreased, so even further. It's alright, we'll get it before the end of 1920 and start this war. 
Army supply consumption just dropped, and finally we are able to build radio factories. Ugh. Hopefully the capitalists will get on it and actually build some radios, assuming they're of any value. And they are. They're in very high demand. We are now an HM's government after 85 years of, of absolute monarchy and uh, Prussian constitutionalism. We now have a constitutional monarchy. So, welcome to the future, Japan. Huh. Our, uh, our spherling Romania is actually one, the major producer of radios. So I guess our people are still getting some of what they want. Looking at another newspaper. The television will destroy Western civilization. I swear I've heard that before. Some book called Ulyss Ulysses? You, yeah, I think that's how you'd pronounce it. That seems like a perhaps noteworthy book. I think I've heard of it. Perhaps some of you have as well. But enough of that fluff. Onward to war. Let us declare war on China. By which I mean, come on, give me this CB already. Brunei is now a core. Hooray. The revolt of the masses. Additional plurality, lower war exhaustion. Both nice, but neither really relevant, unfortunately. Let's see. Uh, the number of craftsmen is still outpacing the speed at which these factories can grow, which is okay, because it won't forever, and it keeps the industry growing quickly. Uh, speaking of which, let's see. Ah, uh, we have almost closed in on France. Soon we will be number one in every realm because we have secured our place in number one with all of these dreadnoughts that have been built with more still on the way worry not and additional upgrade to airplanes always nice and look at that military power makes me want to drool except it's ours so instead makes me want to laugh maniacally I'll, I'll try to suppress the urge but just know that it's there. Ah, Velociraptors. What clever, clever girls. Gotta love those little uh, those little references to pop culture. Although I'm not sure that Jurassic Park is still considered pop culture. It was 20 years ago. But CB generation speed has increased for the last, you know, two days. Meaningless. Hooray. Whatever. To war. Hidan will be ours. And only take 60 war score? Ugh, I almost pity them. Or I would, except I don't care. So, onward and upward. Let's get started with this. I'm gonna just check 65. Yeah, our supply limit should be alright. Eventually we will get around to researching synthetic polymers, but it doesn't seem like it's a very high priority. Because once we start uh, sieging, it doubles the supply limit, and thus our 90,000 will be under that limit. And you don't suffer attrition while you're currently in a battle. So, yeah, pretty much good to go, as long as we don't increase the sizes, which I see no need to. Because looking at this, we can get a whole, what, 10 units across? Uh, yeah, 10, although here only 8 because it's in the woods, but even in open terrain, you can get a whole 10 units across, and we have 30, so 90,000 is more than large enough, because I guess 10 across, too deep, so we can put 20 in, so we have an extra 10 units that can just sit on their thumbs or replace units that get devastated, but wow. Those airplanes are really making the difference. Five days to siege down that particular bit of land with a level 3 fort. So tanks, engineers, and airplanes. Put them together and what have you got? An awesome army. Fascist soup kitchens. Ooh, 30% more fascist. I will accept that. And I forgot to do any of my opening moves down here in the south. That's okay. Starting to occupy. And the silly Japanese or the silly Chinese have decided they want to take some of my land, which is a very poor choice on their part. Oh, actually, this this is the uh, Luang Prabang, so they've joined in with the Chinese, and again, very very poor decision. 
very one-sided battles that we completely devastate the enemy in. Yep, and down, we're below the supply limit, so we just take the 2% attrition. And, continuing to occupy, let's move on up and clear out some of these enemies in our land. There you go, another successful occupation. Just going to swing out and then back in. Oh, hit the wrong button, so out and back in. And I think there was another successful, yeah, there we go. Started to occupy there. Complete wipeout of the Luang Prabang. They've been losing to me for a long time at this point. I don't know why they still even try. Ooh, I might catch those Chinese troops. But if not, then I will just catch them. Ah, there we go. I'm betting this is going to be a really one-sided battle. They still don't have gas defense, if nothing else. The airplanes, engineers, and artillery are all lined up in the back line. So, that was another fairly successful battle. Albeit not as successful as it could have been. And a complete occupation here. So, moving on forward. And I'm going to have my ships ready for the f small fleet that the Chinese have. In the only place they really have a fleet. So, it's not going to end well for those ships. I imagine they will. it'll take one day and they'll be on the bottom of the ocean. It sucks to be them. They shouldn't have joined, or they shouldn't have been born in the Chinese Empire. And this battle over here is going just as swimmingly as we would have expected. Chinese showing up here and there trying to keep this competitive, but... It's almost embarrassing to see how badly they're getting beaten. Complete destruction there. 20 to 1 kill death. And just annihilated their troops. Caught them out in another couple battles. More annihilations. I'd almost feel bad if this wasn't a video game and thus not really anything to feel bad about. And the 6th army I think I was ignoring, so I'm going to move them on to Beijing. Another upgrade for airplanes, all the better. And more occupations going on. Oh, somebody down here in the south, I believe. Yep, Burma is dumb enough to get involved as well. Well, they've also been losing me to me for a long time, so should know better. Moving the 8th Army around to clear out some of the enemy troops. And Battle of Taiping was extremely successful. Beijing has been taken. We still aren't going to burn the Summer Palace, no matter how often the game tells us we can. I do not want to burn it down. I do not want to, Sam I am. I will not burn it with the fox. I will not burn it with in a box. Or something like that. But going on and clearing out the enemies in Datong, which has been the place of many, many battles, as you may have noticed. Well, we do actually hit some attrition in mountainous areas. So that's not great, but still, on the whole, there are more important technologies than the one that gives us an extra 50% supply limit. And Japanese communists have just risen. That is not who we want in charge, and thus, I am going to go ahead and click the little Hunt Rebels button here. And on these guys. While also making sure it's no longer on the ones in Datong. So, 4th Army will take care of the ones in Korea. Oof. And the Homeland Protection Front will take care of the problems here on the home islands. These troops here, though, are going to have to go... After they clear out Burma, we'll have to hightail it down to Myanmar. And then eventually I'm going to have to move somebody to Brunei. But we can deal with that. Even at war... The, ch the communists are no threat to our strong army. And going to take the all pops, getting more liberal, because 20% of the population of jo J Japanese Hawaiian Islands is like, you know, 20 people. But the first of the rebels have been beaten back. Let's see this war. Come on, China, give in. Not yet. Well, they'll give in sooner or later. Or I'll just keep on annihilating their huge stacks. 
success in the Battle of Korean Bay, as was expected. And there we go, another very successful battle. That should be enough to push it over. Nope, because we're already at the 50% battles maximum, which is annoying, but such is life. And another couple of successful battles. There we go, more successful battles, more rebels and Chinese destroyed. Rerouting the 7th Army to clear out some enemy troops. And moving the 3rd Army around to also clear out enemy troops. More successful battles against the rebels. More successful battles against the Chinese. You know, just the normal thing. Wiping out huge chunks of the enemy with minimal casualties. No big deal. We are starting to lose the number of possible brigades we can raise, though, so I'm going to bring defense spending back up to the 61%. And we've lost this bit of land back, but gained another one, so no big deal. And another one. Onward and upward, good fellows. Continue to wipe out the Chinese menace. Although, honestly, we're more of the menace than they are. All right, they will accept this offer of peace. So there we go. A nice short war with a nice, valuable uh, payout. Going to put some capitalists here, and I'll pull off one of these. I'll pull off one of the national foci that are spent on clerks. Pulling the 5th Army back. Just making sure all of these armies go back to our land. So Tatong, they need to be up here. And there we go. That should be all of them. Liberal gain militancy or conservative gain militancy? I'll let the conservatives gain militancy. Looking at the newspaper, victories, victories, and crisis averted. Nothing really noteworthy, actually. But... The rebels are quickly dissolving in front of our superior numbers and superior technology. Pretty much just our superior might. So yeah, they are completely disappearing. Tractor in Pyongyang, which I'm not sure they have a tractor now, so that's surprising that we got one there already. And next, Modern Army Doctrine. Going to make sure that our army is the most cutting edge that it possibly can be in this time period. And there we go. Continuing to wipe out rebels. Still have some in Brunei, but they may dissipate on their own once we wipe out most of the other stacks. Some of the rebels will disappear instead of actually fighting. I believe it's if militancy gets low enough, which it will get if we wipe out a ton of rebels. And, oh, just now we have a bit of news about our war, along with after the newspaper where news of our victory was came, coming through, and at the same time as it has a, an article on our expansion. So, good job there, people who write newspapers. You're really on top of things. And the upper house just rearranged. Fascists are back over 15%. Navy's gained some extra attack, and continuing to destroy rebels. I'm going to stop there for today. Uh, we've taken more chunks of, of China, as well as beating down, or in the midst of beating down another large insurrection. Hopefully our last one. So, uh, one last thing, I'm going to move this fleet back to shore. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Check back soon for more Victoria 2, Heart of Darkness.